Welcome back to another week of Midwest Whitetail. Uh, please excuse my voice. I got a little cold a few days ago and been talking all day at work and the last uh, few days of the week and ended up losing my voice. So anyway, it is September 15th today, Sunday, and i um, been getting a lot of work done on the farms this weekend, primarily down around the River Bottom Farm and on the new farm. I'm uh, way behind as you guys have heard me mention. So um, this weekend had some success getting the, the blinds out as you noted and I'm, I'm currently working on getting trail cameras back out and, and moving the blinds around, my trailer blinds around for youth season, thinking about where we're going to set up and, and how we're going to approach uh, going after some of these bucks for youth season. I want to say thank you to everyone who's been uh, following along with the first week of the chase. We're having a fun time doing that. For those of you who aren't aware yet, we've we've changed our daily blog style to basically a weekly blog style. We're calling it The Chase. It's on the Midwest Whitetail main YouTube page. You know, it's basically gonna be a more intimate, behind the scenes look at some of our strategies and, and how we're thinking and approaching some of these different things. And so uh, we each have a different day of the week. And so there's fresh episodes every day, basically. So really appreciate you guys watching so far. and. Look forward to seeing how that uh, turns out for the rest of the season. And again, if you guys have any suggestions or anything, just leave us a comment. We're, we're uh, listening to you and anxious to try to tailor it to uh, meet people's needs and expectations. For those of you who watch Chasing November, thank you. That playlist is live on uh, YouTube on our main channel. Appreciate all you guys tuning in to watch it. A lot of people have been asking about the giveaways. And at the end of this episode, Josh is going to announce the winners excited to see who won all those awesome prizes from our partners. Looking forward to youth season. We get lots of questions or I get lots of questions about how do I, you know, keep my kids interest. To me, my family just lives the whitetail lifestyle basically year round. This is not something we do here and there. I mean, we have the properties. We're talking about deer all throughout the year, including my wife. We're farming. We are strategizing all year, talking about next year's bucks. You know, we do the shed hunting, we do the food plotting, and the boys are getting old enough now where they want to be out here. You'll see in some of the clips from the past weekends, I mean, they're out here, they're interested in being with dad and doing what dad's doing, the trail cameras, mowing in the tractor, and I just try to make it fun and always invite them. Um, sometimes we've got other things to do. You know, I just feel like with all of us doing it all the time, it's not something that we just you know, we run out and take them hunting once or twice and then and then they're, that's all they do all year. I mean, this is a year round thing and it's always building up to the hunt, but it's not like the only part of this is hunting. I think that helps. I think they like learning these things. Obviously, when it's such a big part of my wife and I's life that I think it naturally just um, is inviting to the kids. And Bella's getting to that age. In fact, all weekend she's been with me banging the corner stakes in with the sledgehammer into the redneck blinds, helping with the auger, you know, helping get it leveled. She wants to know how to do things. She's talking about how excited she is to bow hunt this year and she got her turkey in the spring and she's really hoping to get her first deer. We actually bought all the youth tags this weekend and uh, made sure to get her a doe tag and an either sex tag and she's, she's really looking forward to it and I think that's it's just a year-round involvement and just it being so present in our lives all the time is, is, uh, is how my kids stay interested in it. Everybody's getting really pumped in the Reed household. Some strategies for that, I mean, I think a lot of you guys already know this, but for those of you trying to think through where good spots might be, obviously we focus on food. I love green soybeans, so either forage beans when they're planted or I plant my beans a little bit later so they're still green into uh, this time of year in mid-September, late September. And then, of course, green plots. I mean, it depends on what your deer are focused on, right? I mean, deer are eating something. That takes a little bit of knowledge of your area and scouting. I mean, sometimes it's acorns, it's the mass crop. Uh, sometimes it's clover. I love a good brassica clover mixture. Some of those smaller food plots you saw us have success last year at the home farm on that bottom plot. I think there's a often an advantage to being close to bedding, little hidden areas, you know, those deer feel comfortable, they're gonna more likely to be using it in the daylight. And then of course, if you have a cool front, we happen to be having a cool front coming in this week. On Friday, actually, it looks like the weather's gonna drop. The highs are in the mid to upper 70s on opening day. And it's gonna stay that way for the first week, it looks like. And uh, that's pretty exciting. I mean, we're hot and humid today in Iowa. It's, it's 90 degrees. Another thing that I think about, you know, of course, when I'm setting things up, and we talk about this a lot, but, 
no ingress, egress access, basically. I try not to have it set up where I gotta walk right through the bedding area, right, to get to the where I'm hunting. Um, I've got five kids, everybody wants to hunt. I've got a few spots that set up well for youth season, and so we hunt them repeatedly, and we, we try to be smart about getting in and getting out. Jumping back to the discussion on early season strategies, particularly in, you know, mid-September, the whole month of September, basically, you know, the bucks are still a lot of times on their summer patterns. And so if you can pattern a buck before they really start shifting into their fall ranges and sw switching to more fall behavior, you can pattern them bed to feed and where they're feeding. It's, it's a time of year where that can be extremely valuable and they're just more killable this time of year a lot of times. And all the things I talked about as far as food, I think apply to even if you're hunting for yourself, you know, you've got a state that's already open. You're thinking about that first week of October you know, obviously we love cold fronts. It seems to be way more successful, at least going after mature bucks, particularly getting into October, but we've all had success early. You know, my most recent memory is with Poseidon on my first set of the year, which is October 6th. I don't necessarily go after bucks per se. Like I'm not jumping in after my target um, unless I hit the right weather. I like to do some doe hunting in early October. Um, but if I've got the cameras telling me or, or the weather's right, you know, my, my target's moving. I mean, of course, I'm gonna make a move and, and listen to that. But, you know, this time of year in particular in September, if you're in a state that's already open, I mean, all the things I mentioned before, acorns, green beans, green food plots, whatever it is, if you don't have food plots, I'd, you gotta find what they're feeding on. The acorns are gonna st start to drop and the deer are focusing on that. And then other areas of like native browse, I mean, it's very specific to, each area obviously, but reconnaissance scouting, reconnaissance with cameras. You know, if you get a pattern on a buck, this time of year can be a great time to take advantage of that opportunity. Next, we're gonna jump over to Owen. Owen's gonna talk about one of his favorite spots on his farm. It's a really neat spot. He's got lots of targets and it sets up well for recurve hunting. And for those of you that watched his uh, last episode on the chase, he talks about this year having some interest in uh, trying to take one of those bucks with a recurve. So thank you guys for joining us and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. I think that's cash. Sure felt good. Felt like cash money. As always, trying to get a couple shots in here today. You know, this September 2024 looks a lot different than it did in 2023. You know, I was chasing a 213 last year, pretty excited about it. I don't have anything like that that I know of to go after this year, but the excitement's not gone. We still got a bunch of really nice bucks that are on the target list. You know, we're gonna be headed down to Kansas here, probably gonna leave in the morning. I bought a farm down in Kansas. I bought a 120 down there. You know, I had that cedar farm last year, that 80, and I sold that and I needed the 1031 into something. So I ended up going to Kansas for a property, partly because I love the adventure of a hunting trip. You know, I went out west to Colorado all those years. We went out there, well, 10, 15 years, whatever. And that adventure of just going out there and seeing new things and all that kind of thing really speaks to me. So I love living on my farm and being close to my farms I hunt, but also that adventure of taking a hunting trip uh, speaks to me now. So that was partly why I bought a farm in Kansas. The other reason is I don't think your price per acre is maxed out in Kansas like it is in Iowa. I think you still got that upswing potential. So I think investment wise, Kansas may be where it's at. So anyway, we're gonna be packing up and headed that way very soon. Today, I'm gonna to show you one of the more important spots on my farm. And the reason I say it's one of the more important spots for this year is because it sets up really well for hunting with a recurve. If they walk through that little clover plot right there, it's about 15, 18 yards is the max shot right there. So I am gonna try my luck with the recurve this year. I don't have the arrows I'm gonna shoot with the bow yet, so I'm still waiting. I've been plinking around with some different arrows, but. Once I get those arrows, I will probably decide which stand I'm going to, and that's what weapon I'll take with me. So if I'm going to a stand like this one, the picket fence stand that sets up so well for a recurve, I'll take the recurve. And if I go to one that just doesn't set up well for a shorter shot, then I'll take the compound with me. So, you know, I kind of found this spot by accident, but if you were looking for spots like this, 
the topographical map's a perfect place to find it. Uh, this spot in particular, it's got a big draw that comes up from behind it there, and we got all this food out in front. There's like six or seven acres, you know, different stuff planted in their diversity. But this big draw that comes up, it runs north and south, and anything that wants to cut across east or west, and we've got cover all over in there. But if they want to go east or west, they usually like cut the end of that big draw. It's kind of a ravine, a ditch. They can cross it if they, if they really want to, but they generally don't. They'll come around the end of it, which is right where that picket fence stand is at and that little strip of clover there. But then when you break it down and look at why it's so good, we've got all these draws. You've got one draw coming from the west, coming up into the crop field. A lot of times they'll walk that draw up and then right up to that point, the picket fence plot, and then drop down in one of our little logging roads that go down in, pops out right behind the tree stand right there. Access is pretty good. I've got it, you've got to hunt a weird south, southeast wind. But access, you just walk the crop field in, it blows your wind into the crop field. Then when you're sitting there, you're blowing your wind across that big, that big draw, that ravine I talked about that comes up in there. You're just blowing it right over the top of that. Before we head out here and I show you these improvements we're making, I wanna show you a couple of hunts from years prior and, and show you why I think this spot's so good. Let's watch that now and then we'll get to the improvements. Thank you. All right, good luck. All right, guys, here we are, the afternoon, November 5th. As you can see, this wind's really picked up. It's probably gusting to 25 or so. We're in a spot that's got a lot of cover, a lot of ravines, and this wind's out of the south, and it's got a lot of north-facing slopes and ravines and stuff in here, so. I should be bedded in this pretty heavy, I think. There's always a lot of does here, so as far as rut hunting goes, it should set up well for that. This is where we sat, what was that, about three weeks ago, where we had that real nice buck come out in that clover. Well, anyway, we got about three hours. It's around 3.30 right now, so we've got a good little set ahead of us. I bet we'll see some deer. When I first saw him standing at the edge of that path, I thought that was light switch. I saw that big frame. But then when he walked out, I figured out what deer it was. I, that's a four-year-old, of course. He's got a just beautiful wraparound beams. He's a big old buck. Come on, light switch. Hopefully he's next. Plenty high, that's as low as she'll go right there, I think. I wanted to talk about this spot right here for a second because I'm trying to get a youth hunter or somebody that would like to shoot a nice management buck 
There's some really nice deer here. I mean, we might call them management deer, but if you're in different areas of the country, this might be deer as big as you've ever shot in your life, you know? So there's one eight here we call the wraparound eight. I guess we got two of those. This is a wraparound eight we've got over here. He's kind of a tall, tight buck, but he's really a nice buck. I bet you he pushes 150 as an eight, so really nice one. There's a 10 that's kind of short tined in here, a little wider, nice buck. And then there's another one that's just kind of tall, maybe 17, 18, well, we, don't, we haven't named him, but 17, 18 inches wide. But I think we're gonna get a chance to kill at least one of them right here. So we're gonna dress this up with just a little bit of green right here by this corn. There's some bare spots in the corn right here. So we're gonna hit all this with green. So make a little double food source and with any luck, we can get one killed right here. We got a lot of cover around this. So it's a good little spot. All right, guys, I think we're at what is probably the most important plot of the season right here. There's three bucks that meet the age criteria that I would hunt back here. And I haven't told you guys this yet, but I plan to do some hunting with a recurve this year. So this is gonna set up pretty darn good for a recurve. I'm gonna put a rubbing post right here. That's why I'm putting a rubbing post here with the licking branch. So I want them to stop right here. Don't necessarily need to stop, but I mean, that's a close enough shot. Hopefully I can make that with a recurve. So, this is gonna be an important one. We've got the wraparound eight, we call him. We've been after him for a couple, two or three years. Something always happens to him. One year he shed an antler. Last year he had broken off one side and fell. But this year, he's just a big framed eight, great big twos on him, threes are short. So he's not gonna be a high scoring deer, but just a pretty big frame on him. We've got another buck that's a 10 with kickers out the front, kickers on the twos and threes. The third one is, one last year if you go back now into footage i think maybe rye was filming this but joe had found a nice heavy antler last year when we did the shed hunt and when he handed me that antler i noticed there was some pedicle on the on the burr of that antler and i said man i hope he grows a normal antler next year obviously that's concerning sure enough he did not so his one side's all goofed up he's got the big split brow and then all kinds of tines and stuff coming off that side but I kind of liked the character, to be honest. I thought about letting him go to see if he'd straighten that side back out, but meets the age criteria. He's got some cool character, really good mass. So I think that one's gonna be another one that's gonna be on the list right here. And uh, if you watch the movement here, it's crazy how they always take the path of least resistance. You watch when they pop out here, they'll always walk out this way when they can go around this side end of the field easy enough. I mean, it's just tall weeds, but Path of least resistance will come right through here. Well, let's go ahead and get this rubbing post in. We want it 15 yards or closer for my recurve abilities. And uh, I'll try and put it on the edge so we don't have to mow around it. We can just come mow around this one side right here, just miss the rubbing post, that'll be perfect. So let's get started. Looks like a clear shot right here. We could always trim a little bit of these limbs if we have to, but. This looks like cash money, so we'll move it over here. This is the spot right here, I'll have you know. It's marked, marked the spot. You see that? X marks the spot. My gosh. I didn't realize it was that dry. We may have to pour some water in that and come back. It needs to set overnight by the feel of it. <clears throat> that one broke, so who knows what'll happen with that. If there's not a scrape here, the size of the hood on your truck, I'll eat your shorts. That's how confident I am. I'm definitely not gonna be eating your shorts. <laughs> oh man, there's just no question about it, man. The spot's gonna be dynamite. They walk this all the time anyway. 
So if they're already walking here, what's the chances they're not gonna hit that scrape? Zero. Well, if you made it this far, hope you enjoyed the show. Obviously, a lot of exciting things happening around here right now with hunting seasons incoming. And uh, following Owen is going to be a really fun time. See how his Kansas farm unfolds, watching him use the recurve. And then obviously, the most immediate thing besides that is the youth seasons in Iowa. Uh, Mike's got a good plan. I know the kids are really excited. And that is just a signifier that for everybody else, the games are about to begin. If you guys have been hunting, hope it's been great. But now, if you're here, chances are you're waiting to hear about the Chasing November Season 9 giveaway of winners. So I'm going to read these. If you are one of the winners, I have already commented on the actual episode. So please go check that out. Please reach out to us on either the Midwest Whitetail official Facebook or Instagram. I will be looking. And what I'm going to need from you is your name, your address, and then inside of those direct messages, I will... Uh, work with you on making sure we get the right prize package to you so again before i read these i can't say thank you enough for taking the time if you did to watch the chasing november series for leaving all the awesome comments uh read through a lot of comments over the last few days and uh yeah hopefully we can do more of these in the future you guys support of midwest whitetail means the world and hopefully this was just a small small way for us to give back but I'm going to read this, then the show is going to end. We'll catch you again for the rest of the uh, the chase videos for this week. And we'll see you back here for another episode of Midwest Whitetail. But without further ado, the winners of episode one, Hoyt Bow Build, is going to be Tate Hale 5734. Once again, Tate Hale 5734. Moving to episode two, the winner of the Mystery Ranch giveaway is at CT underscore hunt at ct underscore hunt episode three redneck soft side blind is going to be at luke greenslade dash f6l episode three redneck soft side blind at luke greenslade dash f6l episode four ozonics hr 600 that's going to be alex morning 33 once again alex morning 33 Episode 5, that's the Lacrosse Boots Package. We've got Pursue the Call. Lacrosse Boots Package, Episode 5, Pursue the Call. Episode 6, the Muddy Tree Stand Package. At Sooner Sean. Sooner with four O's. At Sooner Sean. Episode 7, the Spot Hog Giveaway. It's going to be Jacob Lampkin. J A C O B L A M K I N. Episode 8, from Cuddyback, we've got Dave Robbins, 3751. Once again, at Dave Robbins, 3751. Episode 9, the Kaufman e-bike, we got Braden Ruth, 7918. Episode 9, Kaufman e-bike, Braden Ruth, 7918. Episode 10, this is the Bushnell R-Series Optics Giveaway. We got Kansas Chris. Once again, that is Kansas Chris. Episode 11, Serious Archery Arrows. We have Laterra Outdoors 8001. L A T E R R A Outdoors 8001. Episode 12, $100 to the Realtree Store gift card. We got at Tim Walter 1487. At Tim Walter 1487. Episode 13, this is going to be the Morel Targets giveaway. The winner of that is the WV Good Guy 22. Once again, that is at the WV Good Guy 22. Episode 14, Ralph Emson. Once again, Ralph Emson. Episode 15, Axe Outdoors giveaway, David Robinson 8649. Once again, that is David Robinson 8649. This is episode 16, the giveaway from Taka. Winner of that is at Caleb Peterson, 6069. Episode 17, it's $100 towards our Midwest Whitetail store. We have Kevin Ott, 1580. And then finally, episode 20, which is the Latitude Saddle Set. 
That is Adam Smith 300. Once again, Adam Smith 300. If you had your name called there, please reach out to either the Midwest Whitetail Facebook page or the Instagram. I'll be looking for them all night. And if we can't hear back from you, let's just say in the next 48 hours, I've got a secondary list and I will start leaving comments to figure out who we uh, get in touch with. So again, thank you so much, guys. It means the world. Hope you've been enjoying the chase. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you're having great hunts. And the 2024 season is finally here. Cannot wait to see what memories are made. We'll catch you back here for another episode of Midwest Whitetail. We'll see you next Monday.